Josh, we were just talking, Coach, I asked him the, the difference in, in hitting versus tackling. Um, and, and fin- he likes to talk about finishing violent and all that. As a, as a DB, kind of where's the line for you where, where you know you can, you can stick the helmet in the guy's numbers or, or put the shoulder in versus got to make a got to make a wrap up tackle? Uh, it's all dependent on what kind of play it is and the setup of the play. Uh, personally, me as like a corner slash nickel, I get a little more opportunities to make a, a hit than a tackle at uh, the nickel spot, and whether it's a blitz on the quarterback or like a cover two, I get to come up and trigger on the screen or something like that. So this is all matter of fact, knowing if you got guys coming inside out or if you got to secure the tackle and make the play. And your development personally, how you look back over the, over the first couple of years and, and where it comes to, to where you are now, where were you kind of in the beginning, uh, you know, looking at, a, looking at an offense and looking at a defense, trying to figure out where to go and how to lead those angles versus where you are now when you're reading and even everything pre-snap. Yeah, definitely. Uh, coming in, I didn't, I didn't really know too much coming from high school. I, I just kind of like went out there and played ball, kind of, so to say. And uh, freshman year, it was kind of a little lost coming in, uh, not knowing how to read film, not, not knowing how to watch film, not knowing how to read the play. But now, since Coach Half and Coach Azar got here, they, they took me, teach me little ways to watch film differently, how to look at the receiver splits and how to see the different formations and where the quarterback's under center or if he's in uh, Chicago or whatever the case may be. And those little things like that help me progress my game in those little areas and make me not just go out there and play, but read the offense more so than just go out there and play football. Josh, you're kind of a uh, jack of all trades in this secondary, and obviously you guys have a very talented group back there. How much pride do you take in being a guy that can wear many different hats? Uh, personally, I mean, that's just always been me since since I played Little League ball. Um, I just, whatever the coaches need, whether it's nickel, corner, even if it's some safety or here and there, whatever the case may be, like, I just want to, I pride myself on being able to do everything, being able to cover, tackle, and just not be a jack of one trade, but be a jack of all trades. And, doing whatever I need to do to help this team out and help this team win. What kind of similarities in your game do you see with Jason Matrix? Because he played that nickel role the year before in 2020. Yeah, definitely. I mean, my freshman year, he was a corner, then he moved to nickel, and then he moved to safety. So I guess it's kind of kind of a similar thing there. Like, we both talk about it a lot. We both play similar positions and have played the same positions here and there. So, yeah, I guess there's a lot of similarities. He can hit. He likes to hit. We play physical. We both play the same way, and that's my guy. So, like, we both – like always talk to each other and we play like kind of some of our games. Talk about that gray area between targeting and a good hit. Uh, that must be a very difficult thing to read. I mean. uh, yeah, definitely now. I mean, with today's football, I mean, it's a little harder not to just put your head down and just try to run through somebody as you're thinking about it, as you're trying to make the tackle and trying to make a good hit, you're trying to make them fumble, but at the same time, you're trying to make sure you're going to be able to play the next snap. So, I mean, there is a fine line between it and it's still a little gray area, but I guess you just got to know how and that's our coaches do a good job of teaching us how to tackle and keeping our head up and seeing what we hit rather so than just going in with our head down. Coach Halfley mentioned that Phil has a lot of zip on the ball right now. Do you notice a difference when he was kind of still hurt last fall and now? Uh, yeah, there's. I mean, there's a little difference. I mean, even when he was hurt, he was still somehow finding a way to zip the ball in there. But now it's just like a cover two read like we had today. Like if you're a, a step slow, then he's gonna make sure the ball gets in there and that, that the curl player. And yeah, I can't be too late. I have to make sure I'm on my all my reads and I'm, I'm on all my reads and I read the receiver and all that. So I can't be a step behind because if I do, then it's a first down completed pass. So that helps me get better every day in, in practice. I know you're on the other side of the ball. What kind of growth have you seen from him as a leader in his years here? Uh, I see a lot of growth, whether it's from his play and both his leadership. Um, as he, when he came in, obviously he was newer and he was trying to read the offense and now I feel like he's a lot more comfortable in knowing his ability and knowing what he can do and knowing that he's a really good player and uh, he's taking a lot of growth in that area and leading us as a team, as an offense, he's leading them I see every day and uh, he's more vocal and he's just a, overall a better player and a better leader for this team, and which we need from our, our starting quarterback. Um. When you, just going back to that, uh, what you said there about you know there's the there's that line, but you still know when you can make that hit. Is there part of like a personal signature on that hit? Like when you make it, you're like, okay, that's that's my hit. Like I'll still be here when um, you come back. When you come back up to my spot. Um, I, I don't I don't really know how to. I guess so. I guess you kind of like know when you do make that hit or when you don't. Um, I mean, I guess there's always like a, kind of a little worry. Like did I just get a target and call there, or what did I just do? But I mean, there's a fine line, and I don't really know. It's just every time I watch the tape, I like. I like to get a little scared, so make sure I'm still going to be able to play. So. And completely unrelated, we, we've talked a lot today just us about the pre-practice playlist. Mm. Um, if you had control over it, 
what's on your list if you're going in there, if you get control? Um, there's a lot of Rod Wave and Meek Mill. I guess those two don't really match up, but I mean, that's what I listen to a lot of Rod Wave and Meek Mill, so it wouldn't be what you hear out there <laughs> in our pregame, but that's a little Coach Halfley with the country music. So. Uh, I was going to say, have you gotten an appreciation based off of what he's got, or is it just, no, I don't uh, want that? Uh, I mean, this is, there's, I mean, some of it like, is a little, is, is all right, but some of the stuff he listens to is I rather I'd rather not listen to, but I guess I don't really have a choice as the DB versus the head coach. So, yeah, so I don't know too big, much of a coach. You're not a big Metallica or Motorhead guy. Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't have a problem with it. It's, there's only a couple songs that I listen to, but we listen to a lot of them, and I mean, it's just not, not my cup of tea. I guess I. Well, as a Metallica guy, I'll take that. <laughs> we'll, we'll get you in the Springsteen before you graduate. Thank yeah. You. Thanks,